All right. You want, want to open? open prayer? Yeah. Okay, Lord and Father, we thank you so much for the opportunity we can come here in your house tonight and hear more of your word tonight. And we thank you so much for Keith being here and be willing and able to give us a Bible study tonight. And uh, may we listen attentively and um, um, thank you so much. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, yeah, he's going to read some scriptures. Okay. I love you too. So, before take we that, start. Take that cake out of my hand this week, though. No cake. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this no, is all, no cake this is this all week. showing up in the video. It's all, <laughs> all this week, you know. Um, we had enough Fat Tuesday. Or, well, we don't yeah. do Fat Tuesday any anyway. Okay, so last week we saw that for the Lord's sake, we are to submit to God by submitting to the government. And verse 13 in, in, this pas in, this, in the previous passage says, Submit yourselves for the Lord's sake to every human institution, whether to a king as to the one in authority. That's chapter 2 in First Peter. Um, and then this week we are going to see for our own sake, we are to submit to God by submitting to those in authority over us. And verse 19 in chapter 2 says, For this finds favor if for the sake of conscience towards God, a person bears up under sorrows when suffering unjustly. So what we're going to do is you're going to read one slide up here. Okay. That way, um, oh, yeah. We're reading out of First uh, Peter two eighteen through twenty five, so um, this way, what shows up on the slide gets everybody's going to hear. Okay. Read. So. Okay. Servants be submissive to your masters with all respect, not only to those who are good and gentle, but also to those who are unreasonable, for this finds favor. If for the sake of conscience toward God, a person bears up under sour sorrows when suffering unjustly. And then verse 20, what credit is there if when you sin and are harshly treated, you endure it with patience? But if when you do what is right and suffer for it, you patiently endure it, this it finds favor with God. 21. You have been called for this purpose since Christ also suffered for you, leaving you an example for you to follow in his steps. Who committed no sin, nor was any deceit found in his mouth. And while being reviled, he did not revile in return. While suffering, he uttered no threats, but kept entrusting himself to him who judges righteously. And he himself bore our sins in his body on the cross so that we might die to sin and live to righteousness. For by his wounds you were healed. For, For you, you were continually straying like sheep, but now you have returned to the shepherd and guardian of your souls. I like how he ends this. He's, he's looking at Jesus as the shepherd and guardian of our souls. But remember what Jesus said to Peter when he restored him? Feed my sheep. Mm -hmm. So this, I think, is, is sort of a, a, a touchstone with Peter that, that um, it's something that I think stayed with him. Yeah. Um, oops. Hang on just a second. So... Um, Hang on. So Peter starts off by instructing slaves to be obedient to their masters, which is a rather interesting thing. Today we don't see that, especially in America. There are other countries that still do this, but that's not right. Anyway, he didn't revile against the evils of slavery. But at, over time, 
these basic ideas that the Christian faith, the tenets of the Christian faith, basically informed us that slavery is an evil thing. It's something that we should not be doing. It's something that, that is, is just totally wrong. And I've heard that, you know, different people, and you've probably all heard this, that this can be applied to employer-employee relationships, which in some sense is true. But I don't think that's a lot about what Peter is getting at. First of all, Peter was, was dealing with people who were getting themselves into trouble um, for thinking that their spiritual freedom meant that they shouldn't be slaves, even though they shouldn't be slaves. That wasn't the point. And they were getting in trouble for wanting their freedom, even though, um, you know, and, and, but it, it's their by even being in slavery, they were suffering for something that they didn't do. Um, but in this case, I think Peter is getting at a more, um, a, a, a much deeper meaning in this, in that he's, the example he gives um, is of Jesus. And his suffering. Now, Jesus was never a slave. So how is it that he's giving what Jesus did, how he suffered, how he died on the cross, as an example for us to submit? Um, we're going to see that partly in two passages. In Ephesians 5.21, Paul tells us we are to be subject to one to another in the fear of Christ. Now that's not a slave-master relationship. That's a personal relationship with individuals. That we are to submit ourselves to each other. How do we do that? Well, we look for what others need and try to be the person to help fill those needs as obedient to Christ. And that's what Paul's saying here. Um, he talks about, um, in a different place in Ephesians, where we are to consider others more important than our, ourselves. Um, in Philippians, and that was the next passage I wanted to look at, was Philippians 2, 5 to 11. And I'm going to read this one all by myself, but... Um, this is that passage where Paul is getting at the deity of Christ, but he's getting at the deity of Christ in a very interesting way because he talks about what Jesus did. And he says, Have this attitude in yourselves, which was also in Christ Jesus, who, although he existed in the form of God, did not regard equality with God a thing to be grasped. But he emptied himself, taking the form of a bond servant. See, this is the example Paul is getting at. And this is a lot about what Peter is getting at in a much deeper level, is that as bond servants to Christ, we should be bond servants to each other. We should be serving each other. As a matter of fact, that was one of the things that um, that Jesus showed by example, uh, one of the primary examples we see is when he washed the disciples' feet. Um, back, I remember it was either in the 80s or the 90s, the, the term servant leadership was sort of coined. And that was that you lead by being a servant to others. And that's truly the example Jesus set by his life, and it is also a lot of what he taught about who we should be as Christians. Um, the example he set, washing the disciples' feet, that was being a servant to them. And here he's saying, being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself 
and by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. For this reason also God highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name which is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus every knee will bow of those who are in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and that every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Okay, so that's the end of the thing. I'll close in prayer on this. Lord, we thank you for this time that we can learn about being servants to each other, Lord. How that humbling ourselves, being meek, and serving the needs of the others around us is a way that we are to serve you, that we are to follow you. And we just pray that you'll help us to to be better servants, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Yeah, can you go up?